Hey, this is Talia again. Um, I'm getting ready to do a demo for the Society of Washington Artists, and I thought maybe I would practice speaking and painting at the same time. Okay, so you can see back here, I've divided my canvas, this is a big canvas, I haven't done something this big in a little while since I've moved actually. Um, and then over here I've got my photo with the Notam, so I'm going to use magenta and a uh, kind of a turquoise blue or phthalos, phthalos blue um, that I really want them to be able to sing off each other. I really like this composition um, and I start out super abstract. I'm just going to try to uh, paint in the darker areas. So keeping things super thin. I'm using rosemary brushes right now. Um, this is the ivory series, the flats, and the blue. To me, this is the hardest part of a painting. It's just starting. One of the reasons why I leave the, these areas open is because oil paints are very transparent by nature. As they age, they become more transparent. And I don't want the light areas to have this background show through. So at this point it's really very similar to a watercolor technique except I'm starting with my darks but I'm not making them, keeping them super transparent. Um, just basically staining my canvas and getting to know my Notam which is I, I don't know if I've discussed this before, but basically your no tan is your black and white or your value statement. If you don't get your no tan right, your painting is not going to stand from afar. It's not going to have um, the visual impact from far away. And I want to be heard. So I'm going to start Again, in my focal area, that's my most important area that I get right. And what I'm going to do is, is keep this in focus. And then as we go out in the painting, everything else will be a lot looser and a lot. Um, the edges won't be as hard. The colors won't be as vibrant. We want to keep all the attention on the superstar. So I'm only using one, two, three, four colors. Um, which is how I like to to keep my paintings harmonious. And you can see these colors are nice and strong, which I like. I use um, M. Graham white because I really like it's um, it's made with walnut oil, which doesn't yellow as much as linseed oil. It's also super buttery and and yet still nice and strong. Okay, so I like this color over here, which is just a mixture of white and the red for the roses themselves. And that means that the shadows are gonna have to be a little bit more warm, which is why I just added yellow to this. And then the super light area will actually probably be a mixture with magenta we need a little bit. This is strong color. And I don't want to thoroughly mix the paints. Again, I, I like there to be streaks of the original color in there. And I'm trying not to focus on individual leaves, petals, anything like that. I'm just doing the big, big shapes. Really trying to focus on abstract Um, I heard once, I think it's David LaFell says that any representational artist needs to be able to learn how to see, how to paint abstractly. And I, I really agree with that statement. Okay, so this shadow, this, it's, it's a real um, concave shadow at the bottom of the rose. I'm going to do it magenta again. 
I, I want to keep going back and forth as far as warm, cool, warm, cool in order to convey the form. So not just rely on value, but also rely on color itself. I, I want to keep my colors initially as pure as I can. It's super easy to grade down colors. But once you grade get down, there's no going back. So you want to keep them as pure as you can for as long as you can. And then start working on graying things down a little bit so that you can make, you know, I, I don't know if you've heard that statement, if everybody's shouting, nobody's heard. So eventually I don't want all these saturated colors, but until I'm ready to commit to which ones are going to be saturated, I'm going to keep them all super, super bright. Now the shadows are not going to be as thick. So this right here is a shadow and because I can see easily sh see the shadows and all of them have the shadows that way I need to stay consistent with that um, and make sure that I'm always um, representing it accurately. You want to keep that edge super soft. Um, sometimes it isn't color or value that conveys form sometimes it's edges and the harder the edge the more your eye will be drawn to it so you don't want the edge drawn to the shadow area you want it just to keep them nice and soft you also want to constantly pull back from the painting step back so you can see it but obviously that's not something that i can really do with you guys watching me so I'm really going to reinforce the darks now, just around this rose. I don't want to commit with the other ones. You can see I'm still keeping things with straight lines. Keeping my shadow and um, everything basically super abstract so the painting will hold even if you can't tell what the heck it is it will still be interesting your eye will still move around again I want to soften it up this is the hallmark of oil painting okay I say always with a qualifier that there's exceptions to every rule and every suggestion but you generally want your shadows to be thin and fairly warm. And for me, um, I heard this term by Carolyn Anderson. I like to sneak up on my paintings. I don't, I'm not one that can nail it down right from the beginning. Painting kind of has to um, make itself manifest to me. So because of that, I like to keep my shadows, again, all my, the edges in my shadows and everywhere, um, very soft. So one of the important things about when I paint is I try to keep moving around the canvas instead of focusing on one area. There's, I find that I like the painting to surprise me a little bit and so I'm, I still like the overall, you know, do touches and bits there and move around the canvas. It keeps that lively look that I like. I know you can see that in the reference photo this um, blue doesn't exist but it, next to the pink it's going to give this painting a real a real vibrancy um, because your eyes will be able to rest. I'm not sure if you've ever um, done the color test where you stare at a color for a long time and then you look at a blank piece of paper and then you see the opposite, the visual complement to that color on that piece of paper. Um, well, when we look at any saturated color for long periods of time, our eyes compensate by it because it's um, stressful on your eye. So they rest by your brain creates the opposite color, the complementary color. The problem with that is in paintings is that if you look at a painting for a long time and the painter hasn't provided the visual complement on the canvas, um, your eyes will 
slowly gray down the image that you're looking at. And I want my images to remain super bright. So I give you places for your eye to naturally rest and to vibrate with the opposite, the opposing colors um, in order to keep things vibrant. It's one of the reasons like, I don't know if you can see with the camera, but some of these areas I've started, the super dark areas, I've started putting in the foliage, putting little red hints here and there. Um, not only does that suggest the, the flowers that are in the background, but it also, again, gives your eye that place to rest that it really craves, especially when using super saturated colors like this. You know, you don't want any color to be in isolation. You want it to constantly be um, represented on the canvas, generally. I really try not to make absolutes because I found that, um, you know, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another. And oftentimes I'll make myself a little rule that okay, I'm always going to do things this way, and inevitably there will be an exception. Um, or I will teach someone who really needs to do a different method. So this is such a large painting that I'm still finding myself losing track of where I'm at, which rows am I painting. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons that it's important to step back once in a while reevaluate. I've also started washing my brushes a little bit more um, just because they're getting more contaminated. Before the demo tomorrow I'm going to give them a nice good uh, washing. So I'm going to work on those two roses right now. And my paints are getting pretty thin so I'm going to mix up another batch. It's, I generally, if I'm in the studio, I like to mix my paint with a palette knife and um, and probably with this painting too, I'm eventually going to tackle it with a palette knife. Um, one of the reasons for using a palette knife, other than the fact that it's yummy and juicy and like, who doesn't like that? It's like painting with frosting yum. That when your paint actually comes off the canvas, like here, I'll show you an example. Um, so we've got this super highlight right here. It actually, when the light falls on it, it's a lighter value than the, or it will be optically look like a lighter value than the one that's lower down. So one of the advantages of painting very, very thick highlights is that you create um, another value. I'm using the really rich warm colors right now. Um, you can see when I painted the background, I left um, the white areas nice and open that I can actually go in and cut in. You wanna connect as many shapes as you can. That's one of the things about this design that I liked. And this area right here um, it's not as important that you keep the colors or that I keep the colors pure because it's not the focal point. It's part of the eye movement. And so if, if a little bit of paint from the background or wherever starts traveling in, that's, that's going to be okay. And as I go through, I'm also reinforcing those darks reinforcing those um, because it's really the dark shapes again like I mentioned that are creating the vibrancy and the no tan structure of this painting how important it is to find what works for us and whatever works for you is what's right for you hope you enjoyed this how I started painting um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe to my Patreon page at patreon.com backslash tally. Thank you.